One of the first things to do is know just between split and split list for a GC. Uh, it's going to be determined largely by the level of the compounds you'll be looking for. Here's a great video from ResTech, uh, which explains them very well. Split versus splitless injection. Split and splitless are the two most commonly used GC injection techniques. How are they different? And which one should you use for your analysis? We'll begin with split injection, which is the most popular thanks to its versatility over a range of analyses. Inside a split splitless inlet, you will find the carrier gas supply, the septum, the septum purge, the split vent, the liner, and the column. Now we'll start the gas flow and simulate a split injection. Let's rewind and go through what happened. First, the gas entered the inlet with a total flow of 104 milliliters per minute, a small amount, three mils per minute, passed through the septum purge to reduce possible contamination from the septum, while the rest continued onto the liner. A fraction of the gas, one mil per minute, flowed into the column, but most, 100 mils per minute, is swept away via the split vent. This ratio, the split ratio, is determined by the user before starting the analysis. Split ratios typically vary between 5 to 1 to 500 to 1, with the higher the ratio, the lower the amount of sample that enters the column compared to what passes out the split vent. During injection, the sample is injected into the liner and vaporizes. Since our example has a high split ratio of 100 to 1, one part goes onto the column, while 100 parts of the sample exit out the split vent. Now, let's look at an example of a splitless injection. In a splitless injection, the split vent is closed and left closed before and during the injection. As there is no split flow, the total flow is set at a dramatically reduced flow rate. Here, it's only four mils per minute. Three milliliters per minute passed through the septum purge while the remaining one mil per minute entered the column. During injection, the sample remains within the liner for longer before entering the column due to the lower flow rate. Once sufficient time has elapsed after injection, the split vent opens to purge the inlet. This duration, known as the splitless hold time, is calculated to be long enough to allow the maximum vaporization and transfer of analytes to the column. So which injection technique should you use? It depends on the concentration of your desired analytes within your sample, the sensitivity of your detector, and any method requirements. Split injection is ideal if your analyte concentration is high enough to afford an on-instrument dilution and still meet required detection limits. The higher flow rates through the inlet lead to sharp, narrow peaks, while simultaneously reducing the time for adverse interactions to occur. However, since most of your sample is vented, your detection limits are much higher. While this can be problematic for less sensitive detectors, a detector with higher sensitivity such as an ECD or an MSMS, help make split injection possible. But if your analyte concentration is very low, you may need to perform a splitless injection. Splitless injections excel at trace analyses. Since all the flow is directed to the column, you can transfer the majority of your sample. However, the slower flow rate into the column can result in the degradation of active analytes through adsorption and breakdown. It also leads to increased diffusion, causing band broadening. This is especially noticeable for more volatile analytes, resulting in wider peaks. While choosing the right injection technique for your analysis is essential, it's also important to optimize your injection parameters. This allows you to maximize both analyte transfer and injection to injection reproducibility. For more information about optimizing for split and splitless injections, visit our resources below or visit restech.com. After determining whether you're going to use a split or split list, 
one of the next things will be uh, what your flow is going to be. And here you can see where a lot of the flows come from. This is height, theoretical equivalent plates, and here's the rate of the gas transfer through the column. What we want is a fast transfer through the column and to get the most theoretical plates or the least height theoretical plate equivalents. So you can see here helium is better, hydrogen's the best, but hydrogen is dangerous. So you can see right in here about 30, 35 is usually where you'll see a lot of the flow rates and maybe up to 40 or so set in a method. So next we're gonna look at a method and then transfer that method into the software. So here is a method for organic volatile impurities on an RTX5 column. Okay, there's the chromatogram. Uh, and then we come down here, basically there's the peaks, all the different peaks on the chromatogram. And here is how it's presented to us. First, you have the column type, the injection volume. There's the split ratio, so it's like this will be split injector temperature, the oven temperature, again with the oven temperature profile, the carrier gas, and the carrier gas linear velocity. You also have here the FID temperature. So we're going to take these values and we're going to transfer them into the software. 